Well, hello and welcome or welcome back to Read Becca for another book haul because I just can't stay away from buying books and I really didn't want to in this case. I was kind of thinking about skipping the massive yearly book sale. It's a big charity sale that happens in like a gymnasium at a recplex. So like basketball gym full of books and they're all secondhand mostly very heavily marked down and it all goes to literacy charity so I'm so lucky to live in a very literate friendly city so I got some very cheap books uh, some of them are not in the best condition but they're still very readable uh, I think I spent $28 and got like 27 books so good deals definitely good deals um I also have a few books here that I have picked up since the last haul I did that I've just acquired randomly or had pre-orders. So we'll, we'll cover those as well. Um, I also, just so you know, this is my first video with a tripod. After all of these years, I finally invested <laughs> the $15 in getting a tripod. I've been doing the kind of stereotypical new booktuber thing where you just do a pile of books or whatever. I've had a whole stack of things that I used as my, my tripod and I finally got one and I don't know why I waited so long. It's <laughs> so much easier than piling things up to kind of get the right height. But so we will see how this goes and I'll be tweaking probably <laughs> what, what the setup is. Um, but yeah, so exciting, exciting advancements in <laughs> booktubing. Uh, so let's dive into the haul. I think we'll start with the stuff that I didn't get at the big sale. Uh, so the first one is actually a Goodreads giveaway I won. That's The God of Endings by Jacqueline Holland. I almost never win uh, Goodreads giveaways. I've entered quite a lot. I've been on Goodreads for 12 years, I think. And this is, I believe, my third over all of those years. But I'm pretty choosy and only enter giveaways that I actually want to win um, or want to read. And so this one is an interesting historical novel um, about a woman who runs a an art school. And I think this winds up most of the story being in the 1980s perhaps, but she is immortal. So I think there's going to be maybe some vampirism or just general immortality. Uh, so historical fantasy, most likely. Then uh, I have one that was influenced directly by booktube. And that is one I heard about on Steve Donahue's channel. This is from Island Press, which I think is a, a small press, a thing. This is Inside the Struggle for Animal Personhood by Samuel Machado and Cynthia Souza Machado with Stephen M. Wise. So this is a graphic nonfiction all about the discussion of this specific elephant, I think, and potentially the, the wider conversation of animal intelligence and sapience. Uh, so that is a topic I'm, I'm very interested in, and this is one that uh, Steve was very intrigued by, so I'm really interested to pick it up as well. The next one is a very exciting pre-order that I had, and that is a really big chunky one. This is The Very Best of Catherine M. Valenti, Volume 1, and I think they had a dog and a cat version of this cover. I'm not sure if the dog one is maybe Volume 2's mock-up, I, I don't know. Uh, but I'm very happy I got this lovely <laughs> cat cover. Uh, if you've been around at all, you know Catherine M. Valenti is one of my favorite authors. So this is a collection of her short work. I think there's nearly 50 short works in here, and I have read, I believe, none of them. So I'm really excited, especially because there's one that's set in her palimpsest setting, and I really loved that book. Very, very unique and wondrous. Uh, she has very lyrical and prose-forward <laughs> uh, writing. So really looking to get into this kind of dreamy short fiction I'm sure she pr produces. Uh, then I have one that was not quite a pre-order, but it's a new release from an author I love. This is Woman of the Sword by Anna Smith Spark. And I love this cover where we got, we have a, a literal woman of the sword and then children. And so I don't really know much about this other than it's by an author I really love. And it's a high fantasy, I think maybe grimdark, leanings uh but it's about a, a woman who is a mother who has her children and has to deal with this sort of sense of adventure with with motherhood as well so that's something we don't see in high fantasy very often and i'm really excited for it and then we have my coffee house press book for the month in vitro by isabel zapata and translated by robin myers uh, i think from spanish 
So this one I'm more on the bubble about. Uh, again, it's from my Coffee House Press, which is an indie press uh, subscription. They publish kind of all across the board, but generally things that defy sitting in one genre. Uh, so this one, it sounds like is going to be fiction about the process of, of reproduction and conception uh, on your own and the sort of misogynistic judgment that comes along with that potentially. So should be an interesting topic. Of course, I filmed that haul and then got an email the next day saying your package is going to be delivered tomorrow, which is today. And didn't know that I had any packages coming to me. Couldn't remember what it was and oh right, it was a pre-order. So, so I've got my shiny new copy of Witch King by Martha Wells. I don't even know what this is about. <laughs> I've not read the, the synopsis. I have not paid attention when people have talked about it. Uh, I know it's high, I think, epic fantasy. It's the start of a new series by Martha Wells, who is the genius behind the Murderbot series. She does have some previous fantasy series out there, uh, but I, I haven't read them yet. <laughs> However, I am excited for this one. Um, and of course, I'm always happy to, to support an author that, that I've loved before. So uh, yeah, I, I don't even uh, know how long the series is, is expected to be. Love this. Got her signature on uh, on the naked hardback. Very cute. Uh, ooh, and nice gold insets there. Um, yeah, so I'm not planning to get to this immediately, but I do want to get to this relatively soon. I think this is going to be on a lot of award lists next year, so I would love to get ahead of that and read it. So back to the haul. So I think that is it for the stuff that I got on my own separate from the big book sale. And now we're on to the massive pile of books from the book sale. Uh, so the first one, and the most of these were actually influenced by, by booktube, I think a lot of them were. Uh, the first one was actually a commenter recommendation from Jacqueline McMenamin, and this is Fellowship Point by Alice Elliott Dark. Uh, this sounds like just my vibe. I think we're following a, a kind of contemporary setting uh, where we have a children's book author who is trying to use her success to set up a sort of land trust for this little peninsula where she, she wants to create sort of a reserve there. And I think there's conflict surrounding that with people from uh, the publishing world and from family members, perhaps. So it sounds like a very interesting topic. And then uh, Love Medicine is the next one by Louise Erdrich. Uh, this one was influenced by booktube because Angela from Literature Science Alliance has been picking up and loving Erdrich's books. Uh, this one I think is less speculative-y than others by this author, um, but usually Erdrich writes in kind of that magical realist space with heavy indigenous themes. And this one I think is much more about community and the love, the types of love that can exist within community, not just romantic love, but platonic and familial. Uh, so that sounds really interesting to me. Um, then one that was not particularly influenced, but this is He, She, and It by March Piercy. March Piercy, I think, is most well known for Women Out of Time, I think is the title. Uh, but she writes kind of philosophical science fiction. This one sounds super duper interesting. So you can see there are these two doors sort of here. And we're in a future, a couple hundred years from now, I think, uh, where capitalism and corporatism has sort of taken over and you can see the smoke billing out of there. There's climate issues or environmental issues there. Um, the capitalism has kind of led to an indentured servitude system, it sounds like. And so our main character is trying to get away from this and leaves for a Jewish free city, which I'm assuming is this lovely green place over here, as well as illegally creating an android. <laughs> so I'm guessing that's the it of the title. Uh, so it sounds like it explores a lot of really great themes. Um, and it's kind of an older work. I, I love classic sci-fi, so this seems like it's kind of the, the feminist new wave of philosophical sci-fi, probably. Uh, so that, that usually taps right into what I love in sci-fi, so we will see how that one goes. Uh, then we have a pile of more literary and historical stuff. <laughs> so first is Year of Wonders by Geraldine Brooks. Geraldine Brooks is an author I very much want to get into. Um, everything that she's written really sounds interesting, both fiction and nonfiction. And this one is a plague novel. <laughs> so that should be very interesting. So this is looking at the plague of 1666 in an isolated rural village and kind of what, what goes on there. So I don't think I need to know any more than that. Uh, the next one is a Pulitzer Prize winner. That is Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. I don't know how I'm going to feel about this, but I want to at least give it a try. Um, this is, as I understand, a very 
like a religious novel. It's it's caught up in a, a family that are very connected with religion, and uh, I think this is a quartet. But many people have read and liked just the, the first one and say you don't need to go on. So I'll at least give it a try and see how it goes. Uh, Marilyn Robinson is another author who I feel like I will probably love the writing, even if I don't love the story. So we will see. <laughs> we'll try that one out. Uh, the next one. I know several people have read this recently and loved it. So I don't know who specifically to attribute this to, but this is Gloria Naylor's Mama Day. And again, this is kind of in the magical realist sort of uh, area where we're, we're on an island off of Georgia, I think. And it's sort of this, this community that rallies around their matriarch, who's Mama Day, who takes care of them in some magical ways, I think, um, without it being like pure magic, but she, she has some, some control of supernatural things. Uh, the next one is one I know nothing about. <laughs> this is The Living Infinite by Chantal Acevedo. And I pretty much picked this up just because it's a Europa edition and they publish great stuff. This is, I, I love their, their format. It's just nice French flaps. They have really clean covers. Uh, but this one is following a Eulalia. <laughs> yes, Eulalia of a Spanish court as she is kind of going through a turbulent time. And I, I don't really need to know any more than that. Uh, I don't know anything about Eulalia. So this will be a great uh, historical fiction education on that for me. Another one that is sort of obscure science fiction is Bruce Sterling's Schismatrix Plus. And the plus is short stories. So I know nothing about what Schismatrix is. I have read one Bruce Sterling book, uh, Pirate Utopia. And that is a very interesting and strange book about uh, anarcho-syndicalists in historical Italy. <laughs> it's really weird alt history with a lot of the big players in uh, Europe around the Second World War. And I think this is going to be similarly very strange and twang with a lot of political commentary. Uh, but. Bruce Sterling just writes weird stuff that doesn't really fit any mold, so I'm looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, now we're on to sort of historical stuff. So the first one is a total random pickup. This is The School for Scandal, and it is a, a play actually. So this is by Richard Brinsley Sheridan. It sounds hilarious, and it, it features the intrigues of such aptly named characters as Lady Sneerwell, Sir Joseph Surface, Lady Candor, and Sir Benjamin Backbite. <laughs> and they sound sound really funny and uh, like gossipy. So I think that could be entertaining and short, very quick read if I need something historical. Uh, then another short historical one from the lovely Anthony Trollope. This is the uh, Her Harry Heathcote of Gangoyle. And I, I don't know what uh, Trollope's background is with Australia, but this is set in historical Australia in the mid 1800s, I think late 1800s. Yeah, late 1800s. And it sounds like he's, he's kind of what we would think of as a, a cowboy, but for sheep in Australia. And uh, I don't really know anything more about the story. It sounds somewhat mundane, possibly, and, and sort of pastoral or whatever the version of pastoral is for that. Uh, but I did recently read the, the first Barchester Towers novel, uh, or Barchester, yeah, first Barchester village novel and enjoyed it very much. So I have been interested in picking up some other trollop. So this is that. I do think I saw somebody read this very recently and, and think it was fine and okay. Uh, the next one was very directly influenced by Britta Bowler. This is Orinoco by Afra Ben. I don't know very much about this other than what Britta said. <laughs> that is that this is a, a historical novel. I believe it was written in the 1700s by a woman author, a British woman, about a black character on these adventures. So it's sort of a traditional adventure novel with a lot of plot and action. And I don't think it really um, blew Britta away, but that is interesting historically. And so I'm super happy to have this uh, Bedford Cultural Edition because it has a lot of commentary. So that's mainly what I'm looking forward to more so even than the book itself is kind of this is an important historical work because of that context. And so I'm looking forward to checking that out. The next one I don't really even know the story of and it's Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert and it's edited by Margaret Cohen. So I'm excited to have this, this is the Norton Critical Edition, uh, to have a lot of context about that. It has some pictures in it and I believe this is mostly just about day-to-day -day life in 
uh, provincial France, I think. Uh, yeah, in provincial France. And there's something salacious about it because it was it was really taboo at the time. So I'm really interested to, to check that out. And this one I think has quite a lot of commentary to it. So so that will be helpful. Uh, next we have May Sarton. I cannot recall who who was talking about May Sarton as one of their favorite authors. Somebody mentioned May Sarton, and I picked up as we are now. This sounds so interesting. It's following an older woman who I believe is in a care home and is kind of struggling with her identity and her the, the sense that she's not being respected as a person in this care home. So she's kind of trying to hold on to, to who she is there. And that sounds very, very interesting. Uh, the next one is Dorothy Dennett, Niccolo Rising. So Dorothy Dennett is kind of a powerhouse of historical fiction. This is following a character, Niccolo, obviously, and is the first in a series, following him as he is an apprentice in Bruges and he rises to um, run this mercantile empire. So that reminds me a lot of um, Bellman in Black, perhaps, by Diane Satterfield, or even um, Ken Follett's books. I can't think of the name. Pillars of the Earth. Uh, but uh, Dorothy Dennett inspired um, many other authors with her works, a um, major one being George R. R. Martin's Song of Ice and Fire is inspired by one of her major series. So she writes supposedly really, really good historical fiction that's kind of epic and sweeping. Very, very intrigued to, to read this one. So I was super pleased to find that. Next one, again, I don't know really anything about this. This is Adam Bede by George Eliot, and this is uh, the Modern Library Classic edition. So again, very happy to have it. George Eliot is an author I would love to read more of, and this one I think is just about country life again. So so I'm really leaning into sort of these, these mundane small town and village <laughs> stories. Um, so I don't really know anything about this one, and I'm looking forward to, to checking it out. The next one I'm so happy I found, because it is a like brand new copy of the posthumous memoirs of Bras Cubas by Machado de Assis and translated by Margaret Jewel Costa and Robin Patterson. And this is entirely <laughs> influenced by Noah from Everyone Who Reads It Must Converse. Uh, he has talked about this book endlessly. And it sounds great, but very challenging because this is kind of experimental, surreal, Kafka-esque, I think. I don't know. I don't know what this is other than it's a story told of a, someone's life after their death, as, as the title implies, perhaps. Uh, so it sounds very interesting and I am maybe looking forward to it. Uh, either that or I'll DNF it very quickly if I don't like it. But I'm happy that Noah no influenced me on that one. Uh, then we've got two books by an author and from a series. These are both Melanie Ron books. So we've got Exiles, Volume 1 of The Ruins of Ambrai, and The Mage Born Traitor, Volume 2. And I've never read Melanie Ron. She writes big, chunky, classical fantasy, and I have wanted to try it, so I'm super duper happy to have both of those. Um, I, I haven't even bothered to read that. <laughs> I, just, I just know that they're going to be big epic fantasy. Then we have kind of a pile of children's books I picked up very cheaply to toss into the Little Free Library nearby because um, they, they are low on books. <laughs> so, so I can toss a couple in there um, every so often. But the first one I'm really debating keeping, and that is a, a like new copy of Pet by Aquiki Messi. I really would love to collect <laughs> all of Aquiki Messi's work, um, but I do think this would do better given away to, to some child who will read it. Um, this one is an interesting one because I, I have read this actually and really loved it. Uh, it follows a character, um, Jam, who kind of makes a creature come out of a painting that her, her mother has painted <laughs> and come alive. And she's living in this world where monsters are supposedly gone from the world, but Pet and Jam team up sort of on this adventure where there, there is a monster in their world and no one will believe them. And so it's, it's a great story and Amezia is such a compelling writer. So I'm really debating keeping this one. I think I'm going to hang on to it and, and wait to see whether I want to keep it maybe after I read Bitter. I'll decide if I want to buy that one as well. And if I really, really love them both, I'll keep them. Uh, the other one that I do plan to read before I donate is The Seas by Samantha Hunt and introduced by Maggie Nelson. And this is a little dirty, dirty of a copy, but it's still very pretty. I love the art there. and. 
I don't really even know what the story is, but it says one of the blurbs here um, is that it's a gothic fairy tale about a lovesickened girl who may be a mermaid trapped in an alcoholic town beside a deeply haunted sea. So it's creepy and lovely. <laughs> so I definitely want to read this one. It's short and cute. And if I do like it, um, I will hang on to it perhaps or get a nicer copy. because As I said, it's very dirty. Uh, and then the, the ones that I'm definitely just going to donate. Um, I just grabbed stuff that was cheap and a mixture of stuff that was pretty diverse um, and some stuff that's really fun. So the first one is Rosa Takes a Chance, a Mex Mexican story of the Dust Bowl, um, a, an American girls novel about Kristen on the trail, So Far from the Bamboo Grove, Zalta's Diary, The Trouble with Magic, and Jacob Tutu and the Dinosaur. So those ones are going to go directly to the Little Free Library because I got those all, I think, less than a dollar a piece. So that is my massive book haul. I'm not even going to try to hold up a pile because there are too many books here. I've got over 30 books <laughs> in piles in front of me. Uh, which ones do you want to see me read immediately? I think um, Fellowship Point is probably one that I will get to very quickly because um, that was up on the list for potentials for booktube prize. Um, I know a number of these shorter works that I want to get to, maybe that the plays would be super fun. So I'm, I'm very looking forward to digging into this pile. So that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching.